This is our technique for double row rotator cuff repair by Lyle Kane and Patrick Yost. Bony landmarks and arthroscopic portals are marked with a marking pen. The posterior portal is 2 centimeters medial and 2 centimeters inferior to the posterolateral border of the acromion. A spinal needle is used to insufflate the joint. Once this is complete, an 11 blade is used to cut the skin. A blunt trocar is then used to enter the glenohumeral joint, aiming toward the coracoid. The arthroscope is then inserted into the joint and a diagnostic arthroscopy is performed. The rotator cuff is inspected from underneath and the uh, torn tendons can be visualized. The anterior portal is then established. A spinal needle is inserted first to estimate the location and then an 11 blade is used to cut the skin. The anterior portal is halfway between the coracoid and the anterolateral border of the acromion. A blunt trocar is used to penetrate the joint and an arthroscopic shaver is inserted and used as a probe. Each of the tendons of the rotator cuff are inspected, starting with the subscapularis, which is intact. The undersurface of the supraspinatus is inspected and can be debrided with the arthroscopic shaver. In this patient, there is a full thickness tear of the supraspinatus tendon. The arthroscope is then removed from the glenohumeral joint and placed in the subacromial space. The lateral portal is then established, which is approximately 2 to 3 centimeters lateral to the lateral border of the acromion at the junction between the anterior and middle thirds of the acromion. A spinal needle is then used to find the proper trajectory for the lateral portal. An 11 blade is then used to cut the skin. A blunt trocar is then used to penetrate the fibers of the deltoid, and an arthroscopic shaver is placed into the subacromial space. The shaver is then used to remove the bursa from the subacromial space. The bursa is removed starting anteriorly underneath the coracoacromial ligament and moving posteriorly and then laterally under the deltoid. A bipolar electrocautery device is used to maintain hemostasis and then is used to remove soft tissues from the undersurface of the acromion. If desired, the coracoacromial ligament can be detached from the anterior edge of the acromion as well. It is important to define both the lateral and anterior borders of the acromion using the bipolar cautery device. Once the bursa is removed and the undersurface of the acromion is prepared, a probe can be used to inspect the rotator cuff tear. In this case, there is a full thickness non-retracted tear of the supraspinatus tendon. An arthroscopic burr is then placed in the lateral portal and used to perform a conservative acromioplasty. The anterolateral edge of the acromion is removed first along with any subacromial spurs. The rest of the acromion is then coplaned down and a smooth surface is created. The distal end of the clavicle is then carefully exposed. Electrocautery will need to be used frequently at this point to maintain hemostasis. The distal clavicle is then coplaned to match the undersurface of the acromion. The supralateral portal is established next. Its trajectory can be estimated with a spinal needle. This portal should be established between the anterior and middle thirds of the acromion, just off the lateral edge of the acromion, and should be aiming toward the footprint of the rotator cuff, as anchors will be placed through this portal. The skin is then incised with an 11 blade, and the deltoid fibers are split.
An arthroscopic shaver is then used through this portal to further prepare the undersurface of the rotator cuff tendon and decorticate the footprint of the rotator cuff. Bleeding bone is exposed to which the rotator cuff can heal. For a non-retracted tear such as this one, anchors are placed with the arthroscope viewing from within the glenohumeral joint. The arthroscope is placed back in the joint and the decorticated area of the footprint is visualized. For our medial row of anchors, we use double loaded 2.9 millimeter Biomet Juggernaut anchors. The insertion sleeve is placed through the superolateral portal and then placed at the posterior medial margin of the greater tuberosity footprint. The anchor is drilled and then inserted. Tension is placed on the sutures to confirm good fixation of the implant and the drill sleeve is removed. The drill sleeve is then reinserted and the second medial row anchor is placed at the anteromedial border of the rotator cuff footprint right along the articular margin. This anchor is placed using the same technique. The arthroscope is then moved back to the subacromial space and the sutures can be seen passing out underneath the torn rotator cuff tendon. An 8 millimeter cannula is placed in the lateral portal to allow easy passage of sutures and instruments. One of the sutures from the anterior anchor is shuttled out the lateral portal. An espresso suture passage needle is then placed in the lateral portal and used to pass sutures through the anterior most part of the supraspinatus tendon. The tendon often will need to be lifted up from the anterior portal using a suture grasper. The tendon is grasped with the espresso device and the needle is fired. Sutures are then grasped and shuttled out the anterior portal. A different color suture is then shuttled out the lateral portal for passage with a similar technique. Sutures are alternated in this fashion to allow for overlapping mattress sutures. The tendon is once again grasped with the espresso device the needle is fired, and sutures are passed out the anterior portal. Sutures are passed at even intervals across the supraspinatus tendon, alternating sutures. If the tear extends posteriorly into the infraspinatus, it is often difficult to reach the posteriormost part of the tear with the espresso device from the lateral portal. The arthroscope can be placed in the lateral portal, and sutures can be passed using a bird beak suture passer from the posterior portal.
Sutures are then shuttled back out either the supralateral or the anterior portal, and the arthroscope is placed back in the posterior portal. When multiple sutures are passed, careful suture management is necessary. We prefer to pass sutures starting from front to back and then tie sutures from back to front. Two corresponding sutures from the posterior anchor are shuttled out the lateral portal. Sutures are then tied, first using a sliding locking knot and then using alternating half hitches to secure the knot. Tying this medial row of anchors will reduce the rotator cuff to its footprint along the articular margin medially. Once the sutures are tied, they're shuttled out the supralateral portal, and the next pair of sutures is retrieved and pulled out the lateral portal. These sutures can then be tied using the same technique. Once all of the medial row sutures have been tied, they should be shuttled out the supralateral portal. The lateral row can then be placed. One suture from each knot is shuttled out the lateral portal and will be used to place the posterior lateral, lateral row anchor. A bipolar electrocautery device is used to clear an area of the posterior lateral greater tuberosity for placement of the first lateral row anchor. We use Arthrex 5.5 millimeter swivel lock anchors for the lateral row. The awl is placed and malleted down to the second line. Sutures are then passed through the tip of the swivel lock anchor. The anchor is then inserted while holding tension on the sutures. If desired, sutures can be tensioned individually. The anchor is carefully screwed into place so that it's flush with the cortical bone of the lateral greater tuberosity. The inserter is then removed and sutures are cut. The remaining sutures are then retrieved and passed out the lateral portal. These sutures will be used to place the anterolateral lateral row anchor using the same technique. Once these sutures are cut, the rotator cuff repair is complete. The repair can be inspected from both the posterior and the lateral portal to confirm that the rotator cuff tendons have been reduced to the footprint. Note the crisscrossing sutures from the medial row to each of the lateral row anchors, compressing the tendon to the footprint. If desired, the repair can be inspected from back inside the glenohumeral joint.
Note that the rotator cuff has been reduced nicely to the articular margin. The rotator cuff repair is now complete.